work session meeting of April 11, 2016. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Here. Councilmember Werner? Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer or a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We'll go to item for review. City manager. Council. The first application for you this evening is a spring fair, um, and this will be hosted by the Board of Education on April 27th. They are seeking to close Prospect Avenue at Bangs Avenue and Prospect at, I believe that's Madison, from 3 to 6 p.m. Second is a request from Madison Marquette. They would like to do their annual bonfires beginning on uh, May 6th and running through September. Yay. Third, again, Madison Marquette, fireworks on May 29th and September 10th. And lastly, we have a request um, from Fitz Entertainment to do a big splash, which would be a water rides, arts, and music festival in Bradley Park. I'm asking that the uh, council just approve the dates, August 5th and 6th, as a lot of logistics need to be worked out. If they can't be, then this wouldn't be approved by the Special Events Committee. Um, Alicia, while you're here, can yes. you put the Board of Ed, um, or I'm not sure who runs the sign, you or Hannah, but can you put the Board of Ed um, elections April 19th, 3 to 6 up? Um, just to remind people since it, the, the election was changed. It's three to it's nine. Th three to nine. Three to nine. Three to nine? Yes. yes. All right. Okay. Thanks. Also, how about the security for this um, spring fair? The uh, school resource officers will be involved. Our police officers who are in the schools will be involved and they'll be in charge of the security for that. Okay. It's the first one, right? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next are items to be presented. It's City Planner, Michelle Alonzo. It's the Monmouth County Municipal Open Space Grant. Good evening, council members and members of the public. This is a reapplication for 2016 to the Monmouth County Municipal Open Space Grant Program for acquisition of the street bed for what's commonly known as the Bradley Cove project. As you are all aware, the municipality made application 2015 for a matching grant of $325,000, yet it was determined by Monmouth County that we were ineligible for this grant because the the, because of the nature of the acquisition. That the land, although it's municipally owned, that what we would need to acquire is actually development rights. It didn't exactly fit into their definitions for the program. For 2016, they are revising the definition of property acquisition. And they have encouraged us to make application early in the application process. So thus, I have before you for Wednesday a resolution um, make, to make application for the 2016 round for acquisition funds for Bradley Cove. And also part of the requirement is to seek public comment in an open public meeting 
on the nature of the application, and that is what I wish to do tonight. After I'm finished speaking, I would ask that the city clerk open it up to the public to comment on this application to the county. This application is exactly the same as the one that we filed in 2015. There will be an addendum explaining in a little bit more detail what the acquisition of property rights actually means since that is a little bit of what um, the county couldn't decipher in the last round. Um, in addition, the county is asking about sta status of matching funds. So before I open it up to public comment, do any of the council members have any questions about the 2016 application? I did. It, I noticed that um, they said $3.2 million. Is that based on our appraisal? Correct. Land? That's based on the average of the, the two appraisals we had received. Oh, do you have the resolution in front of you? Um, it's 216-197. First of all, I'm going to ask that we not do the public comment tonight just because it wasn't advertised, so the public isn't here to comment. It was advertised. It was most certainly it, advertised. Was it on the website? It was on the agenda, and she advertised it separately. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I didn't get it. I guess I don't go to the website. It was also in the newspaper. Okay. I mean, we're not voting on this to Wednesday, so we could reopen it Wednesday for more public comment. At your discretion, you could. Okay. So no problem. We'll have people talk about it tonight. Aware through the newspaper advertisement. Okay, my bad. I read the press, I read the coaster, but I didn't read that. Uh, okay, so do you have it? The resolution, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, the city of Asbury Park is committed to this project. What project? It's an acquisition project. By who? Here's my, here's my problem. I'm all for this. But I don't want to get into some agreement with the county where all of a sudden they give us $250,000 and then the county owns this property and not the city, like seven President's Park in, or whatever it's called in Long Beach. I mean, we're not giving up our beaches. We're not giving up anything to the county. All yeah. we're doing is applying for money to help us try to buy this for the city, not for the county. Correct. But that's why it's the municipal, it's titled the Municipal Open Space Grant because it's supposed to be aid to municipalities in the county of Monmouth. Okay, go, go up, go up a little bit. The third, whereas. Whereas the city of Asbury Park is the owner and controls the project site. If that's the truth, why do we even need this? Because we're not the owner, we don't control the site. Madison Marquette does, or I start does, I apologize. Right, and you're, you're right, Mayor. This was, the, this was the template resolution that the county has in the application packet that is required of all but we can tweak the language but we're trying to get the development rights back Correct. not the actual land back Correct. the development rights right the city still which I, I agree but I think that should be made more clear because and if, we, if, we if, can if, do if that. we owned it and controlled it we wouldn't be here talking about it but in the letter that they sent to us they recognize what, what? I, I, I appreciate the county bending over backwards to help us, but I just want to make sure that we don't get sucked into something we can't get out of. And that's completely clear. And again, as I had said in 2015, um, with this application and, of course, with the subsequent Green Acres resolution, um, this if you don't raise the rest of the money and we don't go forward with the project, we are not on the hook for anything. Okay, go to the county's recommendations. On the second page, number one, provide a cover letter indicating, can we see the cover letter before we vote on this? I'll have the cover letter completed by Wednesday. Okay.
Thank you. You're welcome. Does any other council people have questions before I open it to uh, at least a first round of comments from the public? Why don't we just do the public comment Wednesday night? Why are we having two rounds of public comment on it? Because she advertised. If somebody's here to talk, they should be able to talk. And then you're going to open it up again Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday. Okay. Yes. What I do ask for anyone who wants to come up and, and ask questions or comment, then I need you to, to sign the form I have on the table. This is part of the demonstrated proof that we have to provide to the county that we held an actual public meeting. Cindy, we don't need a motion? Just do this no, no, this is okay. At this time, I'm going to open up the meeting for public comments strictly for the Monmouth County Municipal Open Space Grant. Good evening, Pam Lambert and Sunset Avenue. Uh, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for the city. I'm sorry, I'm not better prepared to speak on it tonight, but having been part of the battle to get the rights to this property back for years at this point. Uh, it's wonderful that the county has changed their uh, criteria for the application and it does give us an opportunity to get this space back from the redevelopers who now control it. So I encourage the council to move forward with this. Thank you. Thank you. Pam, if you can just make sure you sign the paper, I appreciate it. Uh, Rita Miranda, 8th Avenue. Uh, did you say something about matching funds? Because we can't hear too good back here. Yes. Um, we, we had received an award last year from Green, Green Acres um, for. Can you hear, Rita? A little bit. It's like, it's not clear. Let me see if this microphone's better. We had, re and sorry, my back is too. Um, we, we had I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> we had received uh, last year a, a funding commitment from Green Acres for $1.1 million towards the acquisition of the street bed for the project known as Bradley Cove in order for us to construct a public park. There is a match required, and the match can come from any funding source. Thus, we, have, we are seeking as part of that match the funds from the Monmouth County Municipal Open Space Program. Did you, not, you, you set an amount before? The amount, right, because with the county program for <laughs> I me. I heard that. <laughs> right, that's a 325000 That's a ma maximum award from the county. Green Acres gave us a dedicated $1.1 million, and our appraisals we got two appraisals per the requirements of Green Acres. The average of those is 3.2 million. So we need in total to re raise 3.2 million dollars. That's our match. No, our match is um, is the the um, the minus the the 1.1 million. So it's. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the only match that Green Acres requi requires is the 25% of what they give. Mm -hmm. So the city could just pay for that, but we think the county has the resources and the county, I think, is supportive. So the county is providing the match to the Green Acres. Okay. So 75% is coming from the state, Green Acres, 25% is coming from the county. That gets us to, I think, like 1.35, something like that. That's what we have to work with, and we're going to go from there and see where else we can cobble together the resources. Okay. No overruns. Rita, if you can sign in by the end of the night. I don't think she heard you. She heard me. She heard me. Jim Henry, Sunset Avenue. Uh, I think this is real progress. This is something that's been going on for many years, as everybody knows. And I think this is a real positive step toward making this a reality and I uh, take my hat off to the council and uh, let's hope the county can come through with uh, maybe even a little bit more money than that. Uh, it's a great project to, and uh, I just hope it comes to fulfillment. Thank you. Thank you. And the other player in this is I-Star, right? So we gotta make sure I-Star is gonna sit at the table, right, to, to, to get this completely off the ground. 
Where's the sign-in sheet? Everybody has the sign-in The sign-in sheet's right down um, where the agendas are on that yes. table. So anybody who spoke, this is part of the process, please sign in before the end of the night. Nobody else? Would anybody else like to comment regarding this uh, project? If not, I'll close the public hearing and then we'll reopen again on uh, Wednesday. And I, I want to tell, say to everyone, thank you very much for, for giving public comment. And thank everyone, I thank everyone for their questions and I thank the council for your consideration. And you'll be here Wednesday night to answer any questions. Yes. Okay, right, uh, we'll move on to review of agenda items for Wednesday's meeting. Um, 2016-182, I was just wondering, it says that this is an exempted property, and I wanted to know why. We're talking about resolution 2016-182, and my question was, it says that this is an exempted property that we're giving a refund to, and I wanted to know why is it an exempted property? I don't know. The, the tax assessor is on vacation um, since last week, but I'll ask him for this, and I'll look it up and have an answer for Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Just, just to segue on that, in the future, can we get addresses instead of lots and blocks? Lots and blocks mean nothing to me, but if you told me 800 Asbury Avenue, I would say, well, that's the firehouse. That's why it's exempt. So if we could get addresses on all of these, it would be helpful. Okay. Thank you. 2016-188. Would you explain this to me, please? Earlier this year, uh, the, the council authorized us to go out for an RFP to review our pilot billing um, before MuniCap was involved. Then we're preparing the RFP now. Um, this will be the second phase of it in case there is anything that there was an error. Um, we can defer them from tax sale this year so that we can try to work through some of the math problems because the collector has found some errors in the pilot billing, which has come before the council before of corrections or additional billing. This is, would be the next step. It exempts everyone from the accelerated tax sale as we move forward. We're taking a precautionary step. Okay. So there are 700 homeowners that... There's 700 properties that right now are in the pilot billing, give or take. Um, some of them may be wrong. We haven't found anything correct currently, but when we go out for an RFP and if we recommend to hire a consultant to review the past billing to make sure that everything is correct, this will allow us to withhold people from the accelerated tax sale that we have to have by law so that they, don't, they aren't included in it. They don't get improper liens put on the property because that had happened previously. Following up, the next one, 2016-189. Electronic tax sales. It authorizes us to do electronic tax sales, which will open up the tax sales, um, which we usually do in December as part of the accelerator program, to basically the world. It's online. Um, right now, you have to come into the city to do tax sales, but we anticipate this will bring in a little bit more revenue and make the process faster and easier. So it'll be like an online auction? On, yep, mm -hmm. of our tax sales. And we, we open it up and hopefully we'll reap the benefits. Okay. Um, just one other observation. I see that, again, we are looking to give our redevelopers an opportunity to build and not do anything about parking except pay $3,000 into our parking fund. And I think we need to look at that. $3,000 per unit doesn't seem very high to me. And we're in a parking crunch. Downtown is blocked. And now we're going to say, yes, you can put in any number of units and just pay $3,000 per unit. Doesn't help the parking problem. 
Um, or, or we have to make it higher. Myself, the city planner, and Christine Ballard, our engineer, will be presenting something for you next month. We've started to work on that to increase the, the fee. Thank you. Jeff? You okay? Jesse? Um, as far as the council is concerned? Or? Uh, yeah, uh, agenda items. Just the agenda. Um, no, I'll wait for the council. You me? Can't do it the easy way. We have to do this by state law. <laughs> Number one ninety. 2016191 awarding LSRP services for DP, DPW facility located 9 Main Street. This is something that was supposed to be done many years ago, wasn't done, and we've been threatened with fines from DEP, so we have to do it. Yes. Thank you. One six one ninety three authorizing the submission of a grant to New Jersey DEP. And this has to do with the Field Lake Commission. And I'm all for it, but the only thing that strikes me very unusual is anytime the Deal Lake Commission comes about anything, they always ask for Asbury Park to be the lead applicant. There's seven members to the Deal Lake Commission. What are one of the other six members going to step up and be the lead applicant? That I don't know. Um, I've spoken to the commission. I've informed them that if the commission slash city receives the grant, um, I would like to enter into a basically a third party agreement with them to ensure that they're doing all the work that they're supposed to and we don't get shortchanged, which we wouldn't just because of the grant application. Um, one of the things that I think helps, as I was thinking about it this afternoon when you asked, is that as we are a low mod area benefit community, that actually is points. So if we act as the lead, we'll get more points for the commission. I understand that. So is Neptune, I would think. Uh, I know the members of the DLA Commission. Obviously, Ocean Township, Block Harbor, Deal, and Allenhurst aren't. But what scares me in the future is one day we're going to agree to some grant and it's going to come back to bite us because guess what? You just agreed to like give away half the lake or something, or just agreed to be the dumping area for the next 10 years instead of the other towns stepping up to the plate. You know, originally they proposed doing more dredging um, and I, upon speaking with them, I told them that I don't believe that was really going to be funded. So they did change their application to address stormwater coming in because it's a flood resiliency grant. Okay, resolution 2016-199. Mm, this is an agreement for 205-209 Bond Street. The only thing I would see maybe it's take care of someplace else is I don't see sewer connection fees in here. And again, maybe that's someplace else. It's usually taken care of just administratively. Okay. That's why I have. Thank you. Any other items regarding uh, Wednesday's meeting? If not, we'll move on to matters by the city council. Okay. Um, I just wanted to thank the Asbury Park Film and Music Foundation for a really great film and music exhibit this past weekend. There were all kinds of activities in the city, and they were really well attended and by a cross-section of our community. So I wanted to say thank you for a job well done. And also to the JET program, I went out to Maiden Monmouth on Saturday 
and our kids did a great job. They sold all their products and they're, they're making a profit and they'll be able to pay back their loans. So congratulations to the mentors and everyone that works with these children. Uh, I, I just have a quick one. I want to thank the Downtown uh, Merchants Group, the Environmental Shade Tree Commission, and the city for doing a great job on Merchants Park. Um, that was a predominantly volunteer uh, endeavor and um, led by the Downtown Merchants and Tom and the Environment and Shade Tree Commission. They did a great job. Um, so kudos to all three of those entities. I just want to like to thank Jackie Pappas. Um, she invited our city manager to speak, and there will be a meeting uh, once a month at the Chamber of Commerce. And I invite you to, um, I can't invite you, I'll talk to Jackie by asking, <laughs> spend the news a little bit more to where people can come out. It was, it was ideal when I thought the city manager uh, did a fine job of speaking. I, I also thought he could have encouraged people to uh, clap for the city council a little bit more, but that's all right. Um, I like to have an update on the Springwood Avenue Park. We're getting a lot of negative comment, uh, comments, and it's being spread all over Asbury. And I think people need to know the truth. Thank you, Councilman. The first phase of Springwood Avenue Park. Um, is still on schedule. There's two little bumps that we've encountered in the last week or so, um, but everything is still on target. There's an issue with the water hookup, which will just be worked through through the water company, and they found another underground storage tank, which just has to be removed or kept in place, and we should have an answer for both of those by the end of the week. Phase two, we should be scheduling the pre-construction meeting in the next week. Um, the city attorney's drafting the contract agreements it should be done by the end of this week. During the pre-construction meeting, we get all those documents signed. The second phase is the bathrooms and fencing. I've already told the contractor that the bathrooms are the more part phase aspect of it, since there is fencing existing, and the bathrooms are, you know, they're more important than a fence right now. <coughs> right now, everything is on schedule. We hope that we still have good weather so that people can be out there working. How about an update on uh, the skateboard park? Uh, we're having some internal meetings, dialogues, discussions, myself, the city planner, the tax assessor um, about alternative places. Um, I've been in discussions with Ryan about it, and we're going to continue just looking to see what we can do and, and help everyone as best as possible. There's a new organization out now, or a committee, that's trying to, uh, would like the council to compete in the complete streets. Would you let the public know how you feel about it, or is it, would you talk about that now? Uh, I've met with the Complete Streets, I guess, coordinator, um, Doug. One of the concerns that myself, staff has, especially on the public safety side, is the volume of traffic on Main Street. Under the federal highway guidelines for a road diet, they anticipate, they say that it doesn't work if you go over 23 ADTs, which is average daily trips. The last traffic count done on Main Street was in September of 2012, which was 19 and a half thousand. So we've requested of DOT that they need to update those traffic count numbers um, and provide a better queuing analysis of how cars can will line up on the street. The major concern that I have personally and professionally is if you have a queue that's too long, you block the box. Um, the volume on Main Street in the summer, as we all know, is horrible. And with too much in the queue line along with the train tracks being active and, and the, the arms down, there's very little way that first responders can get across the city quickly in both directions, east to west, north to south. So we're waiting on DOT to provide us with additional information, and that's where we stand. Uh, one more. This afternoon, there was some work done on uh, the roads on 4th Avenue. Is this going to go throughout Asbury Park, or is it just something that uh, we was able to come up to fix the streets, being that that was one of the worst streets in Asbury Park? We've met with DPW. The mayor attended the meeting. We're trying this on 4th because it's the longest and one of the, the worst streets. This fix is a temporary patch. Uh, the county's coming in to mill the road. We're going to lay down the overlay, which the city's never done. Um, the new DPW director wants to try it. I want to try it. 
Um, the deputy director, Robert Bianchini, will be there. Um, I'll be there if, if my schedule permits to make sure it's overlaid correctly. But we're trying something new to see how we can do it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But we're trying to get spot repairs on some of the worst streets so that for the next couple of years before we can fund them all, they can at least be structurally sound. We are trying, and I agree with you. Um, communication seems to be down all over the city. Uh, somehow or another, we're going to have to come up with a way to get uh, information out to the public. I don't think enough information is being out called out to the public. Um, I know we have we have different committees, we have different ways, we have a board up on uh, Sunset and Fifth, but is there any other way? Because I know a lot of churches, uh, I talk to a lot of the ministers and their congregation, and they wanna, they would like, they're for Asbury Park, and they, but they don't know, their congregation do not have any idea of what's going on. And, I, and there's a lot of people out there, it's just with negative vibes and saying that we're only for one part of the town, which we all know that we represent the whole Asbury Park. So if we can find a way to get better communication to all four corners of Asbury Park, I think everybody will be a little bit more happy and at ease. What, what I would recommend yeah. is when you speak to some of these individuals is to make sure that they sign up for the email notices because not only does the communications director send out a weekly email blast, but social services does also. Well, can we send a letter to the churches? Most churches hold about 100 people. You know, I wouldn't say all of them from Asbury, but it would be a good idea. I think we talked about, Michael and you and I talked about it again last week with Hannah about doing um, quarterly. In certain in, in tax bills. Yeah, right. quarterly um, pamphlets, right? So um, one of the ways that we're hoping to reach people who, again, you know, I mean, forget that we have social media, media right? Twitter, Facebook. A website we have APTV that's constantly broadcasting and putting up bulletins I mean if you eliminate all the people who don't have a computer or potentially a television um, we're going to try to do a pamphlet to attach to the tax bills which will give every three quarterly which would give every um, everyone who doesn't have access to a computer and or a TV um, the ability to be up-to-date I think we talked about that at the last meeting yeah, the schedule with that Sorry. The schedule with that is um, hopefully to have a completed draft in May and get it out around Memorial Day. Okay. Uh, one more. I just can't overemphasize that we need to get out and vote, and we need to help out the, the people that's running. We seem to have a good group in there that's going to be it's going to be better for this town if they get in. And um, you have your own choices to make, but. The most important thing is to vote. Thank you. That's it. I have nothing. What? what? Jeff? I have a couple. Uh, parking sign, you know, the signs in the parks. Uh, as far as changing them, as far as no picnics and anything, we're making progress on that? Yes, Mayor. Um, DPW and the police department. Um, and myself and Councilman Clayton met early last week and we're actually going to do an inventory of all our signs, road, parks, everywhere citywide, um, along with painting of curbs, make sure we're up to code with that. It's still going to be a full-fledged, both departments working together to try to hammer down some of these issues that we face. Okay, thank you. When are the specs going to be ready? I know we're going to do the chairs and the umbrellas the specs for the surfing and the specs for the transportation center are going to be out the surfing uh, we have it basically ready to go and I'm preparing to have it advertised in this Thursday's coaster with a, a due date of May 5th so that would be the next one that would be coming forward to council and um, the transportation center I had an opportunity to speak to the city manager earlier about that and uh, we will be effectuating notice to the current tenants um, essentially right now they're operating on a month-to-month -month tenancy because their their actual written leases had expired some time ago so we have to give them at least 30 days advance notice uh, of the fact that we are going out to open public bid they will have the opportunity like anyone else 
to submit a bid uh, for the spaces that they currently occupy. And uh, we anticipate that we would be in a position to make a recommendation to mayor and council sometime um, either the second meeting in May or the first meeting in June with the startup of the new leases to be effective as of July 1. That's the schedule that we're operating under. Okay, thank you. Uh, I agree with Amy. Uh, the park, great job by ESTC, great job by the city, staying out of the way. And, and they know. took down tree. No, DPW did a great no, job. I, okay, and, but I mean, you know, I'll give you a tough point where it's due. No, DPW but, did a great job in taking down the trees. Great, great by, but I yeah. stayed out of the way, and they, they did a great job, and it, it, it's beautiful. Anybody hasn't seen it, please go by and look at it. And a lot of hours, and now we have to maintain it. Uh, they want to know about lights. There's already power there, so that's something JC Pinel can like hook us up with. But again, excellent job. And again, I'm going to. Be my last comment every day till I get Mr. Gary Carr from Trenton, New Jersey to come to Asbury Park and tell us what's going on with the parking garage. Because I guess Gary Carr does watch APTV or has no relatives in Monmouth County because I would be embarrassed now that he doesn't answer our questions if I was him. Especially he's probably making $120,000 a year, 150000 and he's in charge of this parking garage and we can't get anybody from Trenton to respond. And just so the public knows, Michael and I met with the two new uh, representatives to the assembly and we voiced our concern we have a new governor's representative we met with and voiced our concern and we still don't get a response from mr. Gary Carr so I expect mr. Gary Carr one day would come down and say John Moore I'm gonna shoot you in the head if you keep on saying my name but if that's the only way we can resolve this problem I have no problem every meeting saying have you heard from mr. Gary Carr no <laughs> okay can you shoot him another email Yes, I know the assembly members emailed me a couple days after we met saying that they're going to reach out to them. So I was letting them do their job with that, too. Because they usually go above them and it trickles down. Is Gary, <laughs> is Gary Carr the, the top of the top? I mean, can no, you go higher than Gary Carr? There's at least six people higher than Gary Carr. Well, he's the one who keeps on saying, I was on vacation. I had to shovel snow. I can't come to Asbury. My dog has fleas. I mean, he's the one who keeps on making excuses. So. He's the only name I know. Can't we so go over his head? So the get assembly members just go over his head and then it trickles down. Can our lawyer send him a letter? No, I think Michael's better off addressing it. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. All right, we'll move on to matters from the city manager. They're on. Thank you, Ms. Dye. Uh, there's a few things this evening. Uh, for Wednesday's, Wednesday's agenda, there is the draft to be introduced capital budget. Um, this is much earlier than normal. I had requested of the CFO to place the capital improvement fund monies that were needed so we can get out to, to acquire some of the equipment. Um, as we all know, during, these, during the, the storm, we lacked some heavy equipment that could serve multiple functions. The normal lead time for buying a larger you know, eight or 12 ton truck is six to nine months because there's only a couple vendors that make the chassis. So the plan and goal is to have the, this ordinance introduced April, adopted May, 20-day um, estoppel period, and start placing orders in early June. Um, this will cover various equipment that DPW needs, a loader and a truck. Um, here, we've talked previously about the lack of security. There will be funding for improving the security. Um, there's some issues at the fire department that will be corrected. As part of this grant, it will be also as part of the capital plan. It will cover some of the matching requirements if the fire department acquires a grant. Um, it covers a generator here for City Hall. Currently, the generator is very, very undersized and doesn't touch anything but approximately 35 to 55 percent of the police department at any point in time. That's on state contract. We actually have a legitimate price. Um, the city has never engaged in continuous improvement and replacement of vehicles. So what would happen in the past was they would buy nine police cars and wait a couple of years. This time what we're, we're proposing is replace three cars a year so we have the newest safety and it's not such a heavy hit all at once. Um, my favorite purchase is the purchase of the gas boy system in the public works department. Right now we don't have any mechanism to track gas usage um, at all. And this is something that's been many years overdue, but this is a state contract item and will be actually allowed to track gas usage. Um, so I'm recommending staff has seen 
seen the uh, items on the list. This is what the department's asked for during the budget process. It covers everything um, for introduction and then adoption, and we can start doing some improvements. Number two on the list is City Hall RFP. Approximately 2009, 2010, there was an RFP issued by the former planner, Don Samet, to redo this complex um, for a private developer to come in and basically say what can be done here. Keeping the municipal offices, the zoning allows for up to eight stories, so it would be a mixed use with residential um, possible parking. What the city planner and I have been talking about has been let's reissue the RFP and see if there's, been, there's an interest in redeveloping this lot. It's worth a shot. All it will cost us is the advertisement cost, but let's see if there's interest. There was interest back in 2009-10, um, but the market has obviously changed. The housing demand here is absolutely greater. Um, it's one of those things that we're asking to say, this is what we want to do. Let's, let's see what's out there and see if anyone is interested in developing. There is no cost to the city. All the, in the RFP, all the costs must be borne by the selected developer if we even get a response. But this is something that we feel it's worth a shot to see what happens. Um, number three is the road program. We anticipate being out to bid in May or June um, with the road program. We'll have some more information either at the next meeting or in early May about the staging of it because of Sunset Avenue, which will take a long time. Um, right now, the preliminary is to have in the, in the bid process two crews um, so that work can get done faster. It's a very ambitious project, uh, capital program, which is being done for the first time and looks like in about five or six years. Additionally, as we talked about last meeting, there was a grant awarded for DO, from DOT for, for local aid for Fourth Avenue. Um, so either the next meeting or the first meeting in May, there'll be another capital ordinance um, requesting to start the design on Fourth Avenue. But that'll probably be the May meeting. Um, again, that's going to be another large, large issue. And as the councilman mentioned, we're trying just to stop gap because Fourth Avenue is, it's just ruts. It was never milled the last time, so it was just base on base. And now we have some, some issues. It really should have been milled the last time. Number four on the list is community garden. Um, I have a request that Arnold Farms has requested the ability to use um, number two Avenue A that the city owns as a community garden. Um, they are not a New Jersey nonprofit, so we do have some insurance information. But before we do anything in authorizing the ability to use city lands for another mm -hmm. entity, um, one of the things I want to bring up this meeting for further discussion is setting some sort of standards, what sort of plants, how we actually go about this. Because I've had a couple of requests from people who want to use vacant city property, but we do need to have some sort of standards so that we don't have a hodgepodge of uses. So that's going to be a policy decision for you guys um, via resolution. Um, I'll be working with the city planner who's just now hearing about this for the first time, that this is what we want to do moving forward. But we're getting requested to use vacant city property. And is that the best use? We're going to look at it again. We've looked at some of the other city uses before. But this is going to be coming back probably in June, maybe July, for how to use it better. Uh, the workforce development RFP, the consultant, there was only one, has agreed to a 60-day extension so we can be a little bit further in the budget adoption process. Um, all of the consultant's recommendations have come back outstanding and hire them. So that was a good response. Um, it can still be rejected at that time, but they have agreed to a 60-day um, extension. Trash can plan, uh, this will be possibly, depending on council action, for the next meeting to ask Madison Marquette as part of the menu item monies for trash cans along the boardwalk. Uh, we're trying to bring uniformity, as we've talked previously, about around the city about trash cans. In the capital plan, there actually is money allocated for for garbage cans connecting all points of the city with the same uniform design um, and replacing some of the ugly blue oil bent uh, things that we have out there. So 
we're working on trying to find some financing for this because the cans are expensive and it's going to take years to replace them all all and come up with a better plan than having three on every corner. It just doesn't work. It doesn't look good um, and how to make it more efficient. Lastly, um, the judge's position as per the MOU had to be advertised because he was up for reappointment. We advertised, I've received probably 15 um, resumes. What we were thinking of doing is after next week's, the workshop se session, we'll say 11, 18, the 25th, um, try to keep it a lighter agenda and bring people for interviews. Um, you don't have to answer now, just give me a call that maybe around 7, 7.30 start bringing in some of the interviews. You'll get resumes with recommendations on who should be brought in and if you feel that like someone else should be, that should be early next week. Um, but that's the, the thought process right now, just because to keep things moving. The appointment is, is up in May, and obviously if no one's appointed in May, it's a holdover position. But this again was all done, required by the MOU. And that's all. Is there any questions? No. Matters by the city attorney. <clears throat> yes, uh, one matter. As you may have seen in your package, and as uh, the mayor indicated earlier, on the agenda on Wednesday is a resolution. It's number 2016 201 that would award a concession regarding the rental of umbrellas and beach chairs on the city's public beaches. Um, the bids were open last Thursday, April the 7th. Uh, one proposal was received and it was from the existing contractor, PIMCO LLC. The requirements of the RFP are, they include, among other things, that the contractor provide a description of all equipment to be provided and utilized for the concession, including the number, size, and style of proposed umbrellas and beach chairs, and that the vendor must attach color pictures, depictions, or other renderings of all equipment to be rented to the public. So in addition to the standard chaise type um, beach chairs and regular um, umbrellas and chairs, this year the um, uh, contractor has proposed an addition and I'm going to just pass out to you a copy of what is proposed. Okay, so um, the contractor indicated that if PIMCO LLC is awarded the contract for beach rentals, we would like to propose the supplemental new use of the following windshield collapsing umbrellas on Asbury Park public beaches. We are simply suggesting these as a new option going forward and they will not replace nor affect the intended use of the traditional umbrellas mentioned previously. This type of beach umbrella has become synonymous with beach luxury in recent years and are very popular at high-end resorts and popular city beaches throughout the East Coast. They look very attractive and inviting when lined up in a neat row. They shade a larger area than a standard umbrella and provide wind protection on a breezy day. They can be spaced out adequately and set back from the shoreline so they do not excessively block the view of those behind them. Many beachgoers attempt to block wind on the beach by laying their umbrella down on the sand. This is against our policy as a horizontal umbrella is unsafe because it cannot be anchored properly. Offering these new luxury and properly anchored amenities will further differentiate Asbury as a leading seashore destination and satisfy the needs of those looking to escape frequent cool beach breezes in a safe and convenient manner. The presence of these will also make <coughs> relaxing on the beach possible on days where the weather would otherwise make it uncomfortable. We hope to have the opportunity to add these into the existing mix of beach chair and umbrella rental choices. So before this concession is awarded on Wednesday, I wanted to propose that to mayor and council to see what your thoughts were, whether uh, the city is interested in allowing the contractor to utilize these types of windshield collapsing umbrellas in addition to the standard beach umbrellas and chaises and chairs that have been offered over the course of the last um, five, six years that this concession has been offered on our public beaches. The other item that uh, the contractor proposed in its response to the RFP was um, he indicated that he had been talking to Garrett about having a locker slash storage area on the beach so the kids don't have to lug the chairs. And um, um, we had put in the RFP that any request by the contractor to utilize any public property had to be first submitted, reviewed, and approved by city officials. So uh, that's something that if you're okay with the concept, we could vet through the beach staff to make sure that you know, the areas that are chosen are um, satisfactory. And Garrett didn't have a problem with this from the last time I spoke to him. 
the hard, hard one is dimensions. Dimensions and where it's going to be. I guess probably on every beach. So I'll to, have that information for you for Wednesday. Okay. And in terms of these collapsible windshield umbrellas? I don't have a problem with them. Um, I would put them more towards the back than the front. And yeah. only in the sense that people have tents down there. People have makeshift umbrellas exactly like this that fly all over. Um, I don't think it's that far far of a stretch. Um, but if, if they could, you know, maybe not up, up in front of the, just put them back a ways. Yeah, what she proposes, set back from the shoreline. line. So no, I have no problem e either, but it's gonna be one of those things here are the rules. Once you break the rules, they're gone. So keep them back by the bulkhead. And I don't think they take up any more square footage than an umbrella, do they? Yeah, they look big. Well, they're for two. They're for two. So, well, if two umbrellas by the same amount of square footage, so as long as they're to the back and they understand that, I have no problem with it. How about the cost? Mm -hmm. What do they say? Um, they are at the contractor's cost. I, I don't. The city is not putting out any money to, for this at all. The, the requirements of the RFP is that all equipment has to be provided by the contractor, but it had to be reviewed first and approved by the city. Well, as much as you're running the second part, as far as the storage bins by the beach directors, or anything run less by them also. Okay, very good. That's it. Can I have a motion to open a uh, meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. All right, everybody knows the rules. Be nice. Don't be fresh. You have three minutes. Please state your name and address <coughs> for the record, please. Good evening, Pam Lambert and Sunset Avenue. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about the update of the administrative code. Um, the One of the sections that we were working on was the uh, bicycle ordinance section. Uh, we know, we all know that there are bicycles are mentioned in the code more in more than one location. Um, the second location that they're major is in the beach uh, section where bicycles are handed completely differently than in the rest of the administrative code. Um, we are getting to the beach season and that section of the code really needs to be addressed because as we identified when we talked about it maybe four or five months ago, there are many inconsistencies. Um, the signs are either in, the signs that are up there are either wrong, flat out wrong, or inconsistent. And we need, need to make a decision on how you want to handle bicycles and other wheeled vehicles this summer. The signs up on the boardwalk are wrong. They're wrong about when you can walk your dog on it. They're wrong right. about a, a, a whole plethora of things. So if we could get new ones before Memorial Day. It was part of the menu items with Madison okay. Marquette. We okay. had that discussion. Oh, oh okay. So yeah. so your, yours are going to replace the ones that are there. Yeah. All yeah. right. But, there's in, but the inconsistencies in the code itself need to be addressed before they can even begin to order okay. signs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And make sure you check, you you have the right date for when dogs are allowed on and off, right? Because it's not pre the sign. I do. Okay. I have a draft of a sign for a conversation I have with the city manager, but we do need to talk about it because the signs that are out there are incredibly verbose, and I don't think anyone reads them all. And they're wrong. We need some help. Why would you read them? What the pertinent stuff is. So I figured the best way to start the conversation was do a draft, send it over yeah. to Al, and then you guys tell me. But I do have the right date. Yeah, check when you check those signs, Michael. Check the date because the previous ones were wrong. Yeah, we noticed they were wrong. That's why I broached it with them and, and recommended it as a menu item. And they're, the coloring is going to be consistent with what's going to be proposed previously. The orange coloring, so it's sure. again uniform across. That's the everything. sign you emailed me, and I was I yes. said yes. Okay. That was the sign we paid for last year. At a menu item. Yeah, yeah, ten pounds off. So yeah, so we had a year to get it right, and so we're down to two months. Let's do it. And I agree with Pam, let's make sure they're consistent with the code. Forget the signs in the picnic park. Let's get on these. Good evening, Anita Wiener, Madison Avenue. Uh, there are a couple of new restaurants that have opened in the downtown and they are, 
creating eating areas outdoors. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that the amount of space that they're occupying is according to code and that they're not <laughs> usurping uh, walking spaces uh, downtown. So I'd like somebody to look into it. Can you, before you leave, Anita, maybe not on the microphone, but why don't you tell us the names sure. of those restaurants? You got it. And that's something, that's something once the season turns, we'll be checking them all because it, I'm making up numbers. It was supposed to be 10 by 4, they go 11 by 5 until we go down there and say no, move them back in. And then they pay us X amount of dollars. And now we have a penalty clause. If you beat us, we're going to beat you with a penalty. And the zoning officer has been out um, with renewed interest in the central business district about addressing these issues. She was out the last two weeks doing it. So we know it's an issue. Um, people are creeping, and we're going to stop it. Jen Sparrow, 2nd Avenue. I just want to say, in, as a kudos to the city, because I don't think you get enough of that, that the uh, film festival, which was fantastic for the city of Asbury, I have to say most of the people that came in our store on Sunday were not from Asbury Park. Many of them new to the town over the last 20 years and thought the place was amazing. So we got lots of great PR. And the Department of Public Works came around on Sunday and emptied all the trash cans a, because of wind, B, because they were all overflowing, and it made the city look a lot better. So it was really fantastic for them and whoever asked them to do that. It made a big difference on our sidewalks and in our streets. So thank you for doing that. And the special events, our downtown association is working really hard to figure out how to get at least one event a month. So between the showroom and the uh, arts programs, it's really starting to, I think, turn the tide for those of us that are trying to build businesses down here as a, different than bars and retail. So uh, the city was certainly cooperative in making sure that the streets look great on a Sunday, and on a Sunday afternoon. So whoever needs to be thanked, please thank them for doing so because it was really a nice thing to do. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue, Asbury. Um, I'm reviewing the bill resolution. I don't know whether you're aware that Mr. Scotland's firm has submitted two bills, and I just wondered why. I'm going to review them Wednesday. I'll give you an answer Wednesday. They could be for two different months. <laughs> They, yeah. they, they could be. Yeah, I, well, I know, or two different years. We won't no, no, we're past the year part. Oh, no. And, and we've asked them to, to clean up their billing process with what's escrow versus what city owned, owed to them, just to make it easier. And more okay. And that's probably what it is off the top of my head. Okay. And um, Mr. Guyberson, what's his title? Does, is he, like, in charge of the beachfront? I don't understand, because I have here Garrett Guyberson, the beach bathing bank, $6,000. I mean, what's his title? I thought he was part-time. I don't understand that. I believe the special title is beach manager. Beach supervisor, beach manager, I'm not sure. The, the $6,000, he doesn't get for no, himself. I, I, okay. No, 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 I know that. That's the bank to open up to no, sell No, 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 I know that's his, that's his, his he oversees it. Right. He oversees that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But that's why I was just wondering, what's his title? I didn't think he was really. I, I believe. Uh, We'll check with Mary King. I think Beach Supervisor, and he's paid fifteen thousand dollars a year. Oh, he's still part time. So I do have a suggestion with the beach chairs. Uh, I don't know if you were here, John, but I've been here all my life. They used to store them under the boardwalk. So I don't know what kind of a cockamamie deal you can make, but maybe you could put a hole. Make that's what little. we don't want to do with storms because. The, the old boardwalk, the bulkhead was wood, and you could do that. The new bulkhead, it's like the fiberglass. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know all the because construction. Because of the storm surge and everything, you but don't yeah. want to be playing with the bulkhead. But Fourth Avenue, I mean, that's they used to just open the hatch and put all those beach chairs there. I mean, God only knows they needed them because it was like Coney Island down on that beach, and uh, you couldn't, you had no place to step. But as far as the ones further up, I don't, I don't know anything about that. But um, it was, it's just a thought. I don't know where else you're going to cart them. But well, he's been carting them, and he, he runs an excellent operation, and uh, it, it's a plus for the city. And I was totally shocked people didn't bid against him just because the beaches are packed and everything. So I'm, I'm happy he's back. He, he runs a great operation. Yeah, good. Okay.
Hi, Freedom Morano, 8th Avenue. Um, I was wondering if there was an update on the senior complex, the condo association. I think the city manager was supposed to give me something from that. Uh, also, I'd like to know what the um, communication director is doing. I see a few things on next door and here and there, but I don't know what she's doing. And comp time, uh, the city manager has said by the end of the year, he'll have that under control. I was wondering if there was some kind of a report that he could give. And um, also, there's a sign on my street, it says street cleaning, 9 to 11 on Thursdays. Maybe you should change that sign and put maybe, because, <laughs> because my street hasn't been cleaned in three weeks. So I mean, it, it, it's inconvenient for people that live on that street to park there in front of their house. If you're not going to come, you don't, I mean, I think people should know that. And the minute you put a car there and they don't come, you get a ticket. And the last thing on the bill resolution is uh, I was wondering if our insurance covers that Mako bill for $6,000 on a car. And I didn't know Mako, you know, bills would, would be that high. It's $6,000. Does our car insurance cover that? Or is that coming out of taxpayers' money? And that's it. I, I don't know if it's coming out of taxpayers' money or if car insurance covers it. It could be a combination of bills for four or five cars. It was one of the ones I asked to review before Wednesday. I'll let you know Wednesday night. Uh, so that's not just for one car? I don't know. Oh. I mean, I, I saw a bill on there that said blah, 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 and it turned out it was like for 15. So I mean, they, they can't print everything on there. It's just like the first four words. So. Mm -hmm. I saw it myself and I was like, why'd we pay $6,000 to paint a car? You can buy a new car. So it could be for three or four. Well, I, I, I mean, we do have car insurance. We have city insurance. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. It is multiple cars. Um, and one of the things that we've done better in the last couple months with the new insurance broker that I want to thank the, can the council for um, hiring any identification and subrogation goes to him. Previously, if there was an accident and we would be able to go after the other person's insurance, it would just sort of die on the vine and no one would take leads on it. But now that, that this insurance broker is much more hands-on than anyone previously, he's actually going after these people. So the Mako bill is a couple cars, and yes, we go after now the insurance to make sure that we're not spending any money. But we do obviously have to pay the money out front to get things fixed. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Um, and yes, if we can go through insurance, we go through insurance. Um, comp time, I've provided that discussion with you before. Um, the communication director, you'll have an update as every department head is supposed to provide a quarterly, first quarter report to me by April 15th, and it'll be discussed at the end of this month or at the May meeting. And the senior complex, I meet with Interfaith tomorrow. Tomorrow? That's good. You're going to have a report on that? Depends on what is discussed. Uh, I, um, well, I guess Fred knows this. When you have a condo association, you have minutes. Yes. So you're going to try to get those? We have them. Oh, I've, you have them? Yes. Oh, okay. And you have the audit, right? Yes. Okay, so what's missing? Just the people that in the condo association? No, everything is on the up and up. They were required to do certain things. They've done certain things. Um, I'm going to ask him what it is going to entail to amend it to have a public person, but it looks like it was part of the original redevelopers agreement, which I don't know how we can open. So that's part of tomorrow's discussion. Okay. Uh, Tracy Rogers, 900 Monroe. <coughs> uh, the 2015 audit. Just wanted to know when is that going to be out. Uh, the total sh complete streets uh, report, uh, well, the update on the traffic. When are you going to, is, is that a request for the DOT or is that going to be contingent on what makes the changes with that road diet plan? Also, uh, at the beach, is there any VIP parking or premium parking? I think that might be a way of 
increasing some revenues if you find a section that is uh, pre-reserved for people you can actually charge more and people may look <coughs> to want to use it when they come increasing their price and i star <coughs> part of the amendment agreement in 2010 or 2011 they had to go out and tell what properties they that they were not going after um, is there a new map that could be put up on a website that actually tells what's I star exact properties that they're going to uh, look at uh, with their with their what they want to use for their redevelopment that's it Uh, the auditors have been engaged. They will start the 2015 audit process on May 2nd, I believe it is, whatever the first Monday in May is. Um, statutorily, it's due by June 30th. The complete streets, in part, it is contingent upon what DOT says. Beach parking, VIP parking, that will be referred to the parking committee. And the I-STAR map, I don't know. Um, I'll talk to Brian. I don't think we could get reserved parking, but Ocean Avenue is two dollars an hour, where first, second, third, fourth, fifth is one dollar an hour. So, there's well, I mean, electronic, you can actually do it through the website. Okay, no, we we don't have that in place yet. Uh, I thought y'all were talking about that for the uh, defender, <laughs> finding out how to utilize social media and internet. Well, we that I, I think. I think that'll all be part of uh, when we hire the consultant. Mm -hmm. If we hire a consultant to look into something like that, that I mean, Joe knows it better than me. I don't know if that can be done. I mean, can you call ahead and say, save this spot for me for five hours and pay, and somebody can't park there? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you love I, I know you can do it, but I don't know if it's right. I don't know if I would do that. <laughs> well, I'm saying somebody, family member, wants to be close, and they'll pay that premium. Okay. Well, again, parking is something we're looking into every day, every minute, so we'll look into it. One last thing I forgot, I, I apologize. Uh, April 17th, Asbury Park Fishing Club, oldest fishing club, saltwater fishing club in America, 1902. Deal Lake Carp Fishing Contest from 7 to 12. Weigh in at the flume at 12 o'clock and $400 in prize money. Get the carp out of the lake. Rodeo? Mayor Rodeo. Oh, we're having a rodeo for recreation? There's an opportunity. On April 21st, rodeo for recreation. Hopefully, everybody knows it by now. Hopefully, everybody's going to attend. Last year, after the recreation season, it was brought to the council's attention that we had to turn children away. And it was kind of like, oh, that's terrible. So we said, I say we, as much as I'm getting credit, it's all five of us. We said that can't happen again. Uh, so instead of having a mayor's ball, which everybody said you have to have a mayor's ball to raise money, blah, blah, blah. John Moore does not wear a tuxedo. So we were doing something very casual. April 21st at the Stone Pony. Uh, great event. Uh, rodeo for recreation. And all the money is going right to recreation. And all the checks are made out right to the recreation trust fund, so you don't have to worry about anybody like pocketing any money off the top or anything else. It's all 100% legit, and it's for the children. And if anybody in Asbury Park cannot help the children, something's wrong. So hopefully everybody will attend. It's going to be a fantastic evening. Uh, Alicia, Cassandra, uh, Cindy, the committee has been doing outstanding work. Uh, Carolina Tool, Jackie Pappas. Anybody and everybody has been just trying to help us because, again, it's for the children of Asbury Park. So it's time to like get off the grumpiness, forget the Hatfield McCoy feuds. Everybody just put down the swords for one night and come out and give to the children of Asbury Park for the future of Asbury Park. And hopefully everybody will attend. And it's going to be it's going to be a neat evening because we have great bands. We have the Lake House children performing. We have all types of entertainment, and it, it's going to be 
a, a great evening. As long as I don't screw it up, they say you have two minutes to talk. I'm like, give me 30 seconds. John, are you supposed to dress up like a cowboy or a cowgirl? Oh, you can dress, it's, it's casual. If you want to dress up like a cowboy or a cowgirl, uh, no bank robbers, uh, no guns allowed. Uh, but no, but please, if anybody and everybody can attend, it's deeply appreciated. And if you can't attend, and a lot of people can't make it because they're out of town and everything, and people have made some very, very generous donations. So it's happy to see when you ask for something that's really good, who comes up, and then it's sad to see who doesn't come up. And so, but you learn. But hopefully this will be one of many. That's it. Can I have a motion to close public session? I wasn't going to talk about it. He made me. <laughs> <laughs> I drive him crazy without 12 hours a day. <laughs> Can I have a second? Second. Can I have a motion to close? Or adjourn? Move it. Second. All in favor? All. All right.